Hi everybody, this is Mr. Mason back with um, another request. A lot of people had questions about the mastering physics question about sliding in socks. So we're gonna take a look real quick. Uh, I'm not gonna take you all the way through the final answer. I'm gonna give you some hints and hopefully that can help some of you where you were stuck. So if we take a look just to remind you uh, about the situation. Uh, Zach is sliding across the floor. He had a starting speed of 3.00 meters per second. Uh, and the friction of the floor is going to bring him to a stop. And we're supposed to try to figure out how far he's going to slide. By the way, if you want better than a stick figure, uh, I encourage you to get on YouTube and search for uh, Tom Cruise Risky Business opening, uh, or I guess it wasn't the opening scene, but uh, you'll see what this looks like in real life. Um, anyway, back to, back to physics. So, notice... I started with the ever-present FBD free body diagram because I want to be aware of what forces are acting on him. Okay, pro tip for you. <clears throat> Anytime that I see something dealing with friction uh, and I've got a free body diagram, one of the first things I'm going to do when I go is I'm going to go do my force summation. Uh, and the reason for that is, in, the, in this case, in the Y direction, he's sliding horizontally along the floor. There's no vertical acceleration at all. So the forces in that direction are zero. So therefore, right away, I can see that the forces acting on him are the normal force and, the, uh, and his weight or the force of gravity. So right away, I can see that the normal force acting on him is going to be the force of gravity. That is not always going to be the case. If he was sliding up an incline or down an incline, that normal force would be something different because of that angle. Uh, so again, it's just a habit that I've gotten into and I strongly recommend that you do the same. Uh, <clears throat> so how is that going to help me? Well, this is where based on these givens uh, and knowing the fact that he is starting with some speed, that means he is starting with kinetic energy, he's going to come to a stop, that tells me that we're going to be using the, uh, the work energy theorem, which tells us that the amount of work done by friction on him is going to have the effect of changing his kinetic energy. It is going to change him from, uh, well, he's going to have, let's see, final, anytime we have a change in something, that's a final minus an initial. In this case, though, his final kinetic energy is zero because he's coming to a stop. All right, so that has the effect of, in this case, the work done by friction is going to equal basically or is going to be acting to take away his initial kinetic energy and reducing it down to zero well once I get to that part <clears throat> let's see now I got to remember how to find the work done on an object well work is force times distance times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors Remember, we're dealing with a, a directional force and a directional displacement. And that angle is going to be the angle between those two. Well, in this case, I have a displacement that's going this way and a force that's acting in the opposite direction. <clears throat> so that angle is going to be 180 degrees. Force times displacement times the cosine of 180 degrees, which is a negative 1. So... What does that mean for us? It means that we end up with this. The work done, remember, by friction is going to have the effect of reducing, basically taking away his initial kinetic energy, which is that starting velocity, or, or based on that starting velocity, I should say. And then once I've got this, it's just a matter of doing some algebra and isolating the distance because remember that's what we're asked to find how far he's going to slide before he comes to a stop all right uh, and so uh, tell you what actually before I do that I need to I almost forgot something here okay that force of friction remember is coefficient of friction times the normal force which we established up here is going to be the same as that. So that is going to be equal to all of this. So I'm going to change this. Sorry about that. 
okay? So that force, so this is the force of friction, sorry about the confusion here, times the distance. That's, that represents the work that friction is doing to Zach is gonna be equal to the kinetic energy that's taken away from him. All right, I see some places I can simplify and now I need to, oops, 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 I need to isolate that distance is what I need to do. So when I do that, I end up with this, and that's that initial speed, of course, divided by coefficient of friction, divided by the acceleration of gravity, and that's that. All right, oh, and I cannot forget, cannot forget that factor there that I almost forgot. And then it's just a matter of plug and chuck. <clears throat> All right. So hopefully that helps. Uh, pause, stop, rewind, however many times you need to, to figure out all that stuff if you're still confused. All right. Now, if you got past that part, then they upped the game by involving his little cousin or sister or something. So little Greta is involved. And basically what happens here is uh, he's pushing Greta along the floor and then lets go and allows friction to bring her to a stop. So now we've got two different things we got to worry about. We got to deal with the net amount of work done by him and friction. And then when he lets go, it's just friction. So once again, notice our old friend FBD, free body diagrams coming back. Okay. Which reminds us that the normal force is still equal to the weight because it's on a flat surface. That's that would be different if she was sliding up or down an incline. All right, this time there's, while he's pushing her, there are four forces acting on her. Normal force, weight, friction in the opposite direction, and Zach's applied force of 125 Newtons. <clears throat> so, here again, I, I use my free body diagram. If I wanna figure out the net amount of work being done to her, the first thing I've gotta do is I gotta figure out the net amount of force acting on her. Well, the net amount of force in that x direction is going to be equal to, in this case, the force of Zach pushing on her in one direction and the force of friction acting in the opposite direction. Or another way to write that is uh, his force, since we're given that, and then in the opposite direction, the friction force, mu mg. Uh, so we use that to find the net force acting on her, which is the combination of those two forces. Once I know that, then I can figure out the net amount of work done to her while he's pushing, because it's going to be equal to that net force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. In this case, she's moving in that direction. He's pushing in the same direction. So that's going to be the cosine of zero. So you just end up with that. All right. Now that's for the first part. Why do we need to figure this out? We need to know how much work he did to her because that's how much kinetic energy she's going to have. Then when he lets go, friction is the only force acting on her. So when that's the case, new free body diagram because it's a new situation so I gotta bust out the art skills here gravity pulling down normal force acting up friction acting in the opposite direction of her motion alright uh, and then we use that to figure out that now in this case it's a, it's a lot simpler. From the previous case, we should know how much work, and I'm gonna divide that out so we can kind of keep that separate. So in the previous case, we know how much work he did, all right, Zach plus friction, I should say. And what that's gonna do is, that should equal the amount of work done by friction by itself once he lets go. All right, so now, the net force acting on her in the x direction is simply the force of friction, which is simply coefficient of friction times uh, the mass times
times the acceleration of gravity and then I would plug that into back into that work equation all right um, remembering that the amount of work that friction alone has to do is equal to is equal to what we figured out up here only this time the difference is is uh, it's going to be, the work is going to be done by the solo force of friction and then whatever distance it takes her to stop, all right, which is what we're supposed to figure out. So that's what you're ultimately solving for in this second part. So again, no final answers here, just trying to give you the basics to get there. Uh, if you got any questions, feel free, get in touch with me at Mr. Mason. BPS on Twitter. Uh, you can ask me questions, and I've been leaving, dropping hints there on a regular. So, uh, hope this helps. Let me know if you got any questions.